So why, we might ask, is Dr. Hammer's work not taught in medical schools? Why are, his, why are not patients all over the world treated based on his discoveries? Why is this not common knowledge? Well, I'd like to give you a little bit of a background information. In 1981, Dr. Hammer submitted his findings, his discoveries, to the University of Tübingen as a postdoctoral thesis. But in spite of its legal obligation, the University of Tübingen and the medical faculty of Tübingen refuses to this day to evaluate Dr. Hammer's discoveries. So in 1986, Dr. Hammer took the medical faculty and the University of Tübingen to court. And in court, the judge asked the dean of the medical faculty why they don't test Dr. Hammer's discoveries. And this is what the dean said. We don't want to know whether Hammer is right. Shortly after, Dr. Hammer was stripped of his medical license on the grounds that he did not revoke his discoveries. In other words, Dr. Hammer lost his medical license, although his discoveries have never been disproved. To this day, Dr. Hammer has been persecuted and all his wonderful discoveries, his this valuable knowledge, has been systematically suppressed by the authorities. Millions of lives could have been saved over the last 23 years, including lives of our loved ones. And this is how Dr. Hammer puts it. We are fighting a crime committed on patients all over the world. So now we're going to talk about metastasis. Okay. And we're going to start with the same slide we studied out with, which shows so beautifully Dr. Hammer's discovery of the correlation between the psyche, the brain, and the organ. Remember what we learned, each cancer is controlled from a very specific area in the brain, linked to a very specific conflict that correlates biologically to the same conflict, that uh, area of the brain that, co that uh, controls the cancer. Well, what does the metastasis theory say? Con uh, according to the metastasis theory, a cancer, so a primary cancer, let's say in the breast, um, uh, breaks away from the tumor and spreads via the lymph system or the bloodstream to other parts of the body where it causes a new growth. Well, let's take a closer look and let's first of all just use or uh, ask some common sense question. Well, if it were true that cancer spreads through the bloodstream, then we would have a serious, or there would be a serious risk of contracting uh, cancers by coming in contact with blood of a cancer patient. Okay? So we would also have to ask the question, why donated blood is not screened for cancer cells? So we should ask the authorities the question, why donated blood is not being screened. Also, if it is true that cancer cells uh, travel or migrate via the bloodstream to other parts of the body, why is then cancer of the blood vessel, vessel, so to speak, not the most common cancer? Because on the journey to other parts of the body, such a cancer cell can get easily stuck at the, at the wall of such an uh, artery or a vein, or a, a blood vessel, I should say, and can cause a cancer there. And also, if it were true that uh, cancer cells travel via the bloodstream, why is there not such a thing as a cancer of the heart that is supplied with the biggest blood vessel, which is the coronary artery? Well, let's look at the lymph system uh, argument here. Well, uh, there's also a problem because there are quite a few tissues in our body that do not, are not supplied with lymph fluid. For example, the bones. And bone cancer is the most uh, common second, most frequent secondary cancer. So the question is how do the cancer cells get there if there is no lymph fluid? 
Also, there is uh, the argument or the, uh, of so-called brain tumors. So in other words, that there is a, a, a cancer cell that uh, migrates to the brain causing a brain tumor. But we have to keep in mind that we are equipped, so to speak, with the blood-brain barrier. You know what that is? The blood-brain barrier is a, a filter, a selective filter, that makes sure that no harmful uh, substances can uh, go into, get into the brain. So you can imagine if we have this protective filter that does not allow uh, harmful substances to pass that barrier, why should cancer cells be allowed to do that? There's also another important argument. We never hear about brain tumor cells or brain cancer metastasizing to the body, right? We never hear about that. Based on the conventional medicine theory, this would translate into brain cells that should then be found in the breast, in the prostate, in the testicles, in the cervix, in the colon, unheard of. Well, what we understand, of course, is that based on Dr. Hammer's discovery, secondary cancers are not caused by migrating cancer cells, but that our secondary cancers are caused by further or secondary conflict shocks. Because we learned about the system here, and that each uh, cancer is controlled from a very specific area in the brain. So under no circumstances can a cancer uh, spread to an, a, an, a part of the body that is controlled from a completely different part of the brain. So and let's look at this uh, with a couple of examples okay, from what we have learned. We've learned that the introductal breast cancer is the healing phase of a separation conflict. The lining of the milk ducts consists of squamous epithelial tissue or originates from the ectodermal germ layer and is controlled from the cerebrum. A lung cancer, on the other hand, is a conflict active phase, or the lung cancer, I should say, develops during the conflict active phase. The lungs are uh, 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 endodermal uh, tissue, they are adenocells, and they are controlled from a very specific area in the brainstem. And the conflict linked to the lung cancer is, as we learn, a death fright conflict. So what is happening is the following. The moment a woman gets a breast gland, a breast cancer diagnosis, and she has a death fright conflict because she associates the cancer with a death sentence, it will impact in the area of the brain that controls the lungs, and then there is a, she develops lung cancer. So the time lapse between the, prime, the diagnosis of the primary tumor and further tests is crucial because it is during that time that the tumor grows. Okay? So uh, routinely, when a person has cancer, any type of cancer, the person is sent for lung x-rays. Right? And this is then if the person had a death threat, when they find a lung cancer, and then they're saying that the cancer is metastasizing. But the cancer is not metastasizing and says, well, I think I'm going to go to the lungs, or maybe I go somewhere else. I mean, this is obviously a new shock and a, a, a cancer that is controlled from an entirely different part of the brain. It's a different tissue, and it is a different phase. And the same applies to bone cancer. Okay? Bone cancer is the most frequent secondary cancer after lung cancer. So let's see what happens. The bones are controlled from the cerebral medulla, up here, yeah, from the cerebral medulla. They are of mesodermal origin. And the conflict is a self-devaluation conflict. So you can imagine if a woman gets a breast cancer diagnosis, she can truly have a self-devaluation conflict. A self-devaluation conflict means now I'm useless at this site, at this area. So